The first single from my album Folklore was Powerless, Say What You Want. And this album Folklore was recorded mainly in Los Angeles, actually in Santa Monica, uh, at Track and Field Studio. They had a studio in Santa Monica at the time. And uh, we just holed up in there and just wrote this album that was just so emotional and beautiful. At the time, I was expecting my beautiful daughter, and I was very pregnant for most of the recording process. And it really contributed to this sort of very real, delicate nature of the album. And Powerless were some lyrics that I had written. Um, I, I, you know, when Track and Field and I get together, we're always trying to, like, put together, like, some... We're always trying to put together crazy combinations of musical styles. And we had this idea, like, breakbeat banjo. <laughs> and they put on a breakbeat. We started listening to these breakbeats to try to get inspired. Because sometimes we'll listen to old vinyl and sort of, like, records. Just kind of listen to textures and get inspired by something, you know, a moment, a riff, something. And so this breakbeat was on, and I'm like, guys, how about a banjo with a breakbeat? Because <laughs> I liked the idea of... This, like, new and old world coming together. And I don't know. I just this idea for folklore and merging, I don't know, some of the eclecticism, I guess, I grew up with, with my Portuguese heritage and all the stringed instruments I grew up listening to and whether it's mandolin or guitarra or different things like that. Um, I used to play ukulele, you know. I, and folklore features over 30 session musicians, including Bella Fleck, uh, the Cronus Quartet. They're, like, this amazing musicianship on the album. So anyway, Powerless was, like, the theme song for the album, the first single. And um, it's a magical moment, and it's it's a lot of my fans' favorite album. It was sort of, like, my breakthrough track in, like, a lot of countries, like, in Europe and stuff like that, where they really started liking me as an artist. Um, anyway, the song's just kind of about... Again, it's that theme of individuality again coming through. It's like a thread in a lot of my songs and just kind of, you know, doing your thing. And it also came from a moment of sort of disenchantment, I think, as well, because I just put out that first album. And I think I was dealing with, wow, what does this all mean? You know, where do I come from? I think you have to look at where you come from before you can move forward in life. And I think the Wonelli experience happened so quick for me that I had to take a moment to go, what does this all mean? And because I express myself through my songs and because my songs are so personal, I use them as like diary therapy sort of <laughs> entries. And once I'm done the song, I understand myself better. So that's why Powerless takes on this sort of like, whoa, hold on here. What does this all mean? Let's let's examine this sort of uh, spirit. And it might, it's really special to me. I performed it at uh, the Juno Awards that year, and I won a best single for that song that year. And I performed it with uh, this amazing group of um, First Nation singers from from Saskatchewan, and they were called Whitefish Juniors. And they came up with, there with these big, amazing voices and these drums, and they were they were like chanting and doing their um, beautiful First Nations singing. And I sang the song, and it was like this really cool moment for me. So so uh, yeah, it's definitely has a really special place in my heart. Try is one of my favorite songs on the Best Of album. And um, it's the song that fans mention to me more than any other uh, of my songs in terms of this song, you know, is really special to me or, you know, this song helped me through a difficult uh, crisis in my life. Or um, and when I sing it live, there's real emotion in the audience where the song really uh, means something different to each person and there's there's a lot of <laughs> crying going on when I sing that song and I cry as well um I think it's a song that really connects the physical and the spiritual in a way because it's like it's about you try so hard you know in life to just do your best and to get through these crazy emotions we have like it's so hard dealing with emotions you know I think especially mm, when you're growing up, you know, when you're really maturing. And um, it's hard to make it all make sense, you know, and sometimes just trying to be better for for someone else gets you through the hard time, you know, because maybe you don't even even, um, have the strength to do it for you, but maybe you'll you'll find inspiration in someone else and do it for them, and then it'll get you through that wave, and then you're okay again, you know? So it's kind of like about kind of hanging on to, uh, hanging on to the, the mast, I guess, of <laughs> the sailboat in a, in a stormy ocean. 
So it's fun. Forza is uh, my first uh, commissioned song. <laughs> it was a com commission work. It was uh, an idea. Uh, the Euro uh, Cup Association of Europe, the big football soccer league um, association in, in Europe, uh, invited me to write a song for the European football championships that were to take place in Lisbon, Portugal. And because I'm a Port of a of Portuguese descent, they thought I'd be the perfect person to write a theme song and sing the theme song at the big uh, final game in Lisbon, uh, which actually Portugal made it to the very final game, which made it all the more uh, wonderful. And unfortunately, they lost <laughs> to Greece, but it was a great game and I was very depressed the next day. I stayed in my hotel room eating Portuguese custards. They lost. But, uh, but anyways, that's not the point. The song was uh, created for stadiums. So I really, it was on folklore, but um, track and field and I had so much fun. And it was a challenge because, come on, you know, big soccer songs. First that comes to mind for me is Ricky Martin, Cup of Life, which is like, ole, ole, like, how do you beat that? You know, it's amazing. So that was the challenge. We were like, we got to make it as good as ole. <laughs> I don't know if we accomplished that. But I knew that uh, we had to take a little, give it our own spin. So I thought, okay, let's make it more melancholic. Let's make it more about the spirit of football, the beautiful game, the way it incites passion in people, you know? Let's take a little more, you know, m angle of melancholy here. So um, again, we were still on our breakbeat meets a banjo thing. So we invited Bella Fleck to play banjo on it. And I... Wrote the chorus uh, with this theme word, Forza, and Forza kind of has no direct translation in English, but it's kind of like, you know, kick ass, do it, go for it, on, you know? <laughs> so I thought, okay, people used to shout that to me at my concerts, like, Forza Nelly, Forza, all my Portuguese fans, Luso fans all around the world, um, which have been really supportive of me, you know, in my career, like all my uh, Portuguese fans around the world. So, um, yeah, so... The song, the, melodically, it kind of is like an old Azorian folk or church song. And I grew up listening to tons of, like, Azorian folk and church music in the church. And my mother was a singer in the choir. So it was, like, really deep uh, <laughs> within me, that style. So anyway, that, como uma forza, como uma forza, is very Portuguese, very Azorian. And uh, so anyway, we made that the chorus. And then, yeah, we wrote English verses about the beautiful game. And uh, I sang it at the final, and it was a great moment. The first song I recorded for the album Loose um, was Maneater. And uh, Maneater was like the beginning of the whole Loose project and sort of the defining moment of the whole Loose project. And that was recorded in Miami with Timbaland, as everybody knows. And um, Tim and I hadn't seen each other in five years. We hadn't worked together since we shot a video for a Miss Jade song we did um, called Ching Ching, and before that, sort of performing on stage together on my Wo Nelly tour or something like that. And we got together on the phone and, and um, realized we had been listening to similar types of music, like a lot of um, rock stuff and sort of rock electro bands that were coming out. And, yeah, we were just influenced by the same things. And, and he had been going through sort of like a rebirth of sorts, and so was I. So when we got together in Miami, it was kind of like some, some stars collided in the universe. It really felt that way because when, um, when I saw him, we, we said hi briefly, and then, then we started making music, which is what happened the first time we met, you know. And... Um, he had um, Danger Hands, his co-producer at the time, and um, a few other musicians uh, in the room. And uh, we started jamming, and, and they put up this monstrous beat, which was the beat for Maneater, and it was boom, tsh, boom, gong, 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 tsh, and it was this crazy tom drums and crash, synthetic cymbal sound. And it was overwhelming. It was like a wave hit my body, and I just started writing the verses and the the chorus and and we were it was like the jam of my life it was like everybody was like i don't know what happened to us but all of a sudden the speaker started smoking 
And then this flame shot out of the speaker, and it was like a WTF moment. Like, did that just happen? Did you see that? And it was smelled like smoke, and and we kind of like, just, like an engineer ran in and like <laughs> turned everything off. And it was like, okay. And then like we honestly we put the song away because we were scared of it. <laughs> It was like the devil. We didn't know what it was. And we put the song away. And then we, like, played with it again, played with the fire again, and finished the song on another day. But I'll never forget that moment. 